this session. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and uh, welcome to this morning talk. Okay, and uh, we'll begin. Let me talk about the grace that we extended into our lives so far, and I thank you for your faithfulness. Father God, even as we take time to study your word, we pray that you will speak to us, Lord, build us line upon line, precept upon precept, so that, God, we may be established in the truth of your word, Lord, and that, um, Lord, our lives can truly be built on the rock. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, let's get started. My apologies. I kind of rushed in today to the class. Um, all right, so we are now in uh, chapter 5. Uh, let's turn to chapter 5 where we will talk about faith in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we may not see scriptures the way we did in the New Testament. Last class, I told you to note down, right? Passages like Matthew 17, 20, uh, Mark 11, 22 to 24. Uh, so these are all teachings on faith. Whereas in the Old Testament, we may not find teachings as such very specific to faith. However, we do have the word believe, believe about 22 times in the Old Testament. So just because there is no specific teaching on faith, it does not mean that people did not have a revelation of faith. Who is the father of our faith? Abraham. Which, uh, which testament is he from? The Old Testament, which means that he understood the meaning of believing, he trusted God, and God worked in his life. Right. So people did believe in the Old Testament. And God worked miracles in their lives. So they had a revelation of that. If we look at Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, that's where you know we get that passage, the just shall live by faith, which we also see in Romans. Right? Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by faith. But where is that text taken from? It's taken from the Old Testament. So we're going to look at the Old Testament today and look at, so many men and women of God who have believed God in their lifetime. Now, it's true that each one's story is different. All of our life's calling, all of our um, uh, experiences with God, journey with God is quite different, isn't it? Yet, one thing that is common through all these lives that we are going to read about is faith. So no matter who we are, it could have been the king in the palace or it could have been somebody else outside. They have been listed in um, Hebrews chapter 11, which is the passage that talks about men and women who had faith in God. So the common thread is faith. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Is it a familiar uh, um, chapter? Is it a familiar chapter? Yes, of course it is. That's where we saw the definition of faith and we began over there. So Hebrews chapter 11, once again, it starts off with what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can we say that together? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We missed a word now, which is also important. So shall we say that again with now? Now faith is the evidence, sorry, the substance of things substance. Of the evidence of things not seen. Once more without looking. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, I think we all have it by heart by now what faith is. Let's look at what else we find in this passage. It says, For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Who are the elders? The elders are 
men and women of god who have journeyed before us in faith when we consider the scriptures of the old testament generally elders or you know they also use a term called as patriarchs patriarchs are people like abraham moses david they were mighty people of god mighty leaders in the kingdom of god so when they say elders or the writer says elders here it refers to those who have gone before us in the journey plus the patriarchs you have all these mighty men of god who have lived a life of faith and they are a testimony to us now what does it say about the elders they obtained a good testimony what is a good testimony they obtained a good testimony what is a good testimony ha huh? before faith they showed faith okay yeah they showed faith that's okay but what is a good testimony yeah so our uh, our experience of god's glory or god's power in our lives is good testimony that's okay but what is the good testimony in this context good testimony they obtained a good testimony sorry yes verse 2 hmm they obtained the promises okay see there's another verse if you want to look at verse 39 also verse 2 verse 39 it says and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise so they tried they waited okay some received the promise some did not receive the promise yet they had a good testimony what does that mean good testimony yeah yeah true so the journey they were faithful in the journey is the point some obtained the test uh, the promise some did not obtain the promise we will see we will look at all of them but they were faithful in the journey of faith that's what god is expecting from us that will give us a good testimony see whether we sometimes because of the world that we live in we put a lot of emphasis on outcome results which is good i mean if you if you are working somewhere and uh, you say no results are not important it's scary because the the employer will ask you show me the results i gave you a job what have you done right results are important success or even today's world success is important but what we are seeing here is god is also mindful of the journey outcome okay important but even for whatever reason if we don't reach the finish line okay god is still happy about the fact that we didn't give up god is still happy about the fact that we stayed in faith we journeyed in faith all along that pleases god's heart and thank god when we are in faith we will receive everything that god has promised right okay now a good testimony simply means pleasing god a good testimony in the sight of god you could say okay good testimony before people is when people look at our lives and say oh you know a uh, faithful believer devoted believer good individual in some ways we can say that that is also our reputation people can look at us and we have what is known as reputation but who we truly are is who we are when nobody is watching yes or no 
reputation is when people are watching is it possible to be one way when people are watching and another way when people are not watching it is possible it is very much possible but what is it that we are talking about today good testimony before god good testimony before god means you know god looking at us and saying yes faithful servant good and faithful servant when god can watch our lives and at all times say you have a good testimony it means we are pleasing god it's not about reputation see reputation is what people say about us but they that need not be who we are we've already said we can be two different persons at the same time it's possible but good testimony before god means the way god sees at us at all times and we are pleasing god and we have a good testimony before god that's a big thing because god knows even the unseen things isn't it right but what is it that will give us a good testimony before god a life of faith if i'm going to live by faith it's going to give me a good testimony before god amen so if you want to have a good testimony have faith journey in faith so let's see now about all these people who made that journey of faith we'll quickly look at them i'm not going to talk in detail about them because uh in the third year we study the books of the bible uh and um, the new testament very elaborately we do more like a, a verse by verse study of the new testament so at that time when we study about the book of hebrews we'll go into the details of it the depths of it so at the moment just give us a summary of the lives of people and why they are in this chapter hebrews chapter 11 because they obtained a good testimony before god through their faith now who are all these people let's look would um someone like to read it out please there are lots of verses 40 verses okay how do we do this now uh niv or nkjv nkjv is better because that's what we have in the notes and everyone can follow no faith no faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of the things not seen for by it it, it the elders obtain a good testimony by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible by the faith abel offered god a more excellent sacrifice than cain through which through which he obtained witness that he was righteousness god testify of his gifts gifts and through it, it he being that uh, still speak by by faith enoch was taken away so that he did not uh, did not see the de- death and he was not found because god has taken him Uh, for before he has taken he, he had this testimony that he pleased god but without faith it is not possible to please him for he who comes to the god must believe that he is he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently uh, seek him okay, by the okay. faith okay um, so okay so we'll stop there so that we can explain and then we'll continue otherwise you won't understand anything so many names are there isn't it so why are these names here think about this there were many people in the old testament why did god pick only their names to talk about faith so we have to understand why why these names what was special about their lives what was special about the way they served god so let me share just a few thoughts or insights about these people firstly in verse 3 we are told by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible this world was created 
by God. And we know that he spoke things into being. Psalm 33, we know that. He spoke and it was, he commanded and it happened. To believe something like this, it's faith, isn't it? How, how else can we... Uh, how else can we settle it in our hearts that God created the world by his word? So when God's word creates, what happened? There was nothing and there was something. Now, scientifically, that doesn't make any sense. You know, if some uh, substance doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. You can't make something out of nothing. But that's how God worked. He made the worlds from unseen things or his word and it created. So even for us today to believe, how did this whole world come about? It takes faith to believe that God created the worlds with his word. That's the first thing. Now let's move on. Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain and Abel, sons of Adam, both of them brought God a sacrifice. Whose sacrifice was accepted? Abel. Then what happened? Yeah, Cain got angry and he killed his brother and he was uh, like God uh, punished him and banished him, sent him away. But why is it that God accepted Cain's sacrifice? Oh, sorry, Abel's sacrifice. Why not Cain? Why only? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, true. So is it is it what they gave that was the problem? Because one gave... Uh, meat, the other one gave, uh, you know, the produce of the land. So is that the problem? Is that why God was upset? Okay, sure. So we could talk about the details of what happened. Uh, yeah, one more answer. Hmm. Could be, right? So there are all these speculations we don't exactly know because there are only few verses that talk about Cain and Abel. But the clear passage, you remember we said we should, we should try to understand on the basis of clear passages. This is a clear passage. From Abel, Abel gave with right attitude and the best of the lot. Um, sorry, could you please come again? No, Abel... Uh -huh. Gave with the right attitude, offered with the right attitude, okay, and gave the best of uh, the lot that he had. Okay, great. So uh, Johnson feels that it's probably the attitude that mattered, which is also what the students in class were sharing. So what I'm saying is, all of this could be true, but we will interpret on the basis of the scripture that we have. So here, quite clearly, in verse four, it says. Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Okay? God testifying of his gifts and through it, he being dead still speaks. Think about this. We just talked about faith and that the elders, or, uh, elders got a good testimony. In that list, the first name mentioned is Abel. So is he connected to faith? What do you think? Yeah, so that's how we will interpret. The reason Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God is because it was made by faith. And the Bible says that in Romans 14, 23, it says, whatever you do, do it by faith. Right? Anything that is not of faith is sin. So what is the reason God accepted Abel's sacrifice? There was faith. That's the answer. That's the main answer. And of course, you know, all your answers. 
so when we do something for god or when we bring our offering to god our sacrifice what is god looking for faith look at this it's really amazing it says last part and through it he being dead still speaks we read about abel once few verses and what does this verse say he died how many sacrifices did the, does the bible record of abel only one only one not like others like david and other people only one sacrifice and the scripture says he's dead but his sacrifice still speaks meaning anything that we do with faith that man he did one thing by faith and god is applauding it even in this passage new testament passage and says the man is gone but the work of faith remains amen it still speaks to us still speaking to us teaching us the importance of faith how powerful so it's not even the number of things we do for god it's the heart of faith behind did we do one thing okay was there faith abel only one sacrifice is recorded but he's in hebrews 11 god is saying wonderful faith the man is dead but his sacrifice still speaks okay so that that kind of faith abel had and we are encouraged to have that kind of faith okay let's look now next is enoch enoch what happened to enoch he had a good testimony before the lord and we know that he was taken away he is somebody who did not die and now we are doing the end times so we have all this going on about it's possible that the person who's going to come back is enoch okay but why is he in hebrews 11 faith man of faith god took him he pleased god so much that he didn't even die god just took him so the life of enoch is where we draw inspiration from so many years ago he lived but obviously he had a life of faith because he pleased god he pleased god so much that god said okay come you know uh, and he's he did not taste death now let's continue verse 6 and that's where sukesh stopped he said but uh without faith it is impossible to please god for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so like these people who had faith we too should have faith without faith we cannot please god yes how how do you connect yeah so uh, okay how do we connect these two scriptures yeah three verses he is the author and the finisher of our faith without faith it is impossible to please god ha huh? faith is the gift of god see there there are both of these elements of god's sovereignty and our responsibility which we've already discussed faith comes from god but i have the responsibility to grow my faith and uh, see his miracles take place so both elements are there it's not like god will god will infuse uh, faith every time to make things happen which is why we are learning about having faith right so it comes from the lord that's true but we are the ones who have to work on it does it make sense yeah okay sure sure we can think more about it okay so without faith it is impossible to please god now let's go on let's read um 
uh, verse 7 and then pause by by faith noah being divinely warned of the things not at seen moved with a godly fear prepared a ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and become higher of the righteousness which he according to the faith okay so seven about noah what are what are some um actions that we can see on his part one of course is that he believed he believed when god told him make an ark it's going to uh, there's going to be a flood he believed and if we study some more about the life of noah we'll read that up until that time the earth did not know the meaning of flood so it was a tough thing for a man to believe that something like this is going to happen he believed god's word so that is one thing that noah did and that's why his name is here and we see that he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith so that doesn't mean that noah went around telling people you're wrong you're unrighteous you're ungodly he was simply obedient to what god called him to do and when he was building the ark what happened people who looked at him were automatically feeling condemned because they were not willing to listen and believe god's word but here was a righteous man who was believing it so just by his righteous life people were convicted that's what we can understand because we don't read about noah going and you know preaching or shouting at anyone or telling them you're wrong you're wrong he just lived his life he just obeyed god so this also tells us that when we live a righteous life and especially in front of unbelievers the holy spirit will convict them you know it is said that preach the gospel use words when required that means at all times our life is preaching the gospel but there will be moments when we have to open our mouth and share it because that is important the bible teaches us go preach the gospel so we use our words but even when we don't have the opportunity to preach our words our life is a testimony our life is what will declare about the truth of god yes prem ma'am can godly fear can move us into the faith ma'am like how like there is no with godly huh? fear ma'am so he was moved in the faith like a uh, godly godly fear can move us into faith uh are you are you interpreting that pass that uh, thing see moved with godly fear means how do i put it that also has to do with one's attitude and response god spoke something to him he feared god he was moved with godly fear means he responded with the fear of god that's what it means is that okay we should go by what it actually means rather than the statement uh well i'm i'm trying to interpret that for you prem so moved with godly fear means that he responded with godly fear to what god spoke okay so one more scripture one more example will be abraham when god tells abraham go sacrifice your son with godly fear he obeys so that is what this is that is yeah so though it says moved with godly fear you, we have to understand the essence or the meaning of that we don't go by literal words got it okay fine um 
all right we'll move ahead then we'll read the next section this is about abraham so can you quickly uh, read from verse 8 to verse 12 by faith abraham obeyed when he, he was called to the out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance and he he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign foreign country dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob in highest with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundation whose builders and makers is god by faith sarah herself also received strength to convince seed and she born a child uh, when sh she was past the age because he judged him uh, faithful who has promised therefore for one man and him as a good as dead who born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude okay thank you so in these uh, in this passage there's a mention of abraham as well as sarah what about abraham abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going earlier we saw the um sacrifice of abel we saw the faith life of enoch which pleased god we saw godly fear and a response to god's word in the life of noah what about abraham obedience obedience god told abraham to do something and he did not know which place god is calling him to and yet we see he went out it says and he went out not knowing where he was going so what is the testimony of abraham a man of obedience when god speaks he responded so that is his testimony and what else did god do in his life god gave him a promise the promise that god gave him was you could say in the future firstly with regard to his son isaac that he is going to have a son but you know when god promised him descendants he did not have even one child at that point so one was about the descendants and the other is about a land did abraham receive that land when he was alive not really not really okay so that was not fulfilled but we see that he was living in tents with his sons right isaac and jacob so even when the full land was not given to him the way it was promised he continued in faith that is the testimony of abraham he trusted in god and now what about sarah sarah received strength to conceive seed so that tells us that something impossible happened in the life of sarah and could somebody just share a little bit about sarah you probably already know what happened god promised yes. abraham and sarah that i will give you a son that to abraham because of his faith i will multiply like the sands of the uh, she she shore correct that's a promise and, yeah and uh, sarah it's like they both were in faith but in between uh, sarah lost her faith or uh, could not able to hold the patience and she told abraham that you may have a uh, a child uh, with the maid like that what do we see here like what did faith do in her life
so she was past the age it says past the age of child bearing past the age of so called fruitfulness and by faith god still made it happen in her life okay so this is again a great encouragement for us that abraham could journey with the lord hold on to his faith he saw one major promise fulfilled which is isaac being born but he did not really receive the fulfillment of the promised land he was waiting for it okay and sarah uh, she received the capacity to bear a child when she was past the age all right so uh, we'll just read on um let's go ahead i think someone can now go ahead and read the entire section here till 40 let's slowly read the whole thing and uh, i don't know if i'll have the time to explain it today but we'll just read through it and hopefully we'll just stop great yeah, yeah. someone please pick it up and you can read these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off were assumed of them so embarrassed them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth for those who say such things declare plenty that they seek a homeland and truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out they would have had opportunity to return but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them by faith abraham when he was tested offered up isaac and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said in isaac your seed shall be called concluding that god was able to raise him up even from the death from which he also received him in a figurative sense by faith isaac blessed jacob and isa concerning things to come by faith jacob when he was dying blessed each of the sons of joseph and worshiped leaning on the top of his staff by faith joseph when he was dying made mention of the departure of the children of israel and gave instructions concerning his bones by faith moses when he was born was hidden 3 months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command by faith moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. by faith he kept the passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them by faith they passed through the red sea as by dry land whereas the egyptians attempt, attempting to do so were drowned by faith the walls of jericho fell down after they were encircled for 7 days by faith the herlot rahab did not perish with with those who did not believe when she had received the peace with peace and what more shall i say for the time would fail me to tell of gideon and barak and samson and jephtha also of david and samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms worked righteousness obtained promise stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong became 
valiant in battle turned off flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their death raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sand in two, were tempted, were slang with the sword, they they warded about in sheep's sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They warned in desert and mountains, in den, dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Okay, so uh, there are many other names. We've seen the names of Abraham and uh, Sarah. Then we go on to read of names such as Joseph, as Moses, and later on, you know, there are names of people like Gideon, Rahab, who else? David, Jephthah, and yet it's it says uh, verse 36, it says still others. So I just want to stop with this thought that there were many people who lived a life of faith in the Old Testament. Though we may not have even heard their names, they lived a life of faith. And that's what God wants us to do. Uh, we are going to look in depth about them and some of the insights that we can gain from this passage of Hebrews 11. For today, we'll just stop here. And I want to request maybe someone from class to pray. I'm on doubt. You have a doubt? Yeah, please. Yeah. Is aliens are true? Aliens. Because the world the scientists are saying aliens are going to come attack the earth. Mm -hmm. But here in passage, uh, uh, I'm not sure, 34, it end with turn to fl flight the armies of the aliens. Yeah. See, when we see a word, I just want to uh, again go back to what I told uh, Prem. That we must understand the essence of what it's trying to say. So just because it says aliens here, it doesn't mean aliens. If you look up other translations, it would give you the meaning as foreigners. Foreigners and the way you're asking about aliens is completely different. Okay. And uh, as far as the Bible is concerned, we don't see any reference to uh, aliens like that. Yeah, we, we know there was once in uh, Genesis when the sons of God married the daughters of men and then there was this cross breed, so to speak. There is one instance, but apart from that, you don't see any uh, non-human you know, form of life. And yes, there are... Angels, there are demons. But aliens, the way we you're asking me, I don't think so. Thank you. Sure. So, yeah. Would you like to pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, Father, we thank you for this uh, lessons we have learned. Uh, Father, we praise you. Uh, Father, we thank you for our teachers. Father, we surrender all our else and future in your hand. Uh, Father, we thank you for the plans you have. Uh, Father, we surrender. We are going to give the next classes in your hand. Uh, Father, teach us the way you want to uh, live us and uh, everything you are going to give to us. Is, we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless.